Good morning. Well, it doesn't have to be morning by the time you watch the video, I guess. But it is 6.15. I'm the only one awake. <laughs> um, I'm at the beach. And trying desperately to finish this page. It's tough, man. It's tough. I'm looking at this. This is about print size right here. So these figures are going to be tiny. And we want to make them pop. So I might even put some black in the background or something. But anyways, let's finish this, this monkey. Hondo the monkey. All right. I got the wrong. Hmm. Near you, Rusty Nib. We need to zoom right in. It looks pretty rough. And just look at my look at these <laughs> lines. But when you zoom back out, it's some of that roughness takes. Oh, this isn't a great figure. Well, it is what it is. Don't beat yourself up over your figures. Draw at the level that you are, you know? You can make a comic at any level. Stick figures if you're really terrible. At any level. And improve your game over time. This is my philosophy. And you will be cartooning away. And that's all, all to the good. I think it's important to continuously strive. I kind of realized how weird a lot of this comes off. I was talking to a, a friend of mine, kind of an artist friend at work. She went to art school anyway. She, of course, what she works in has nothing to do with art, just as my job it has really nothing to do with art. Um, And said, yeah, I, um, I'm continuously, you know, just trying to improve my skills. I've been taking classes. I, you know, want everything to be better than the thing before. And she's like, what is this competition <laughs> that you're having? And I went, well, it's art. You got to keep trying to get better. And she's like, that's, that's not how artists really think. <laughs> like maybe not the artist, you, you know. It is super competitive, but you know, it's kind of funny. It, you know, we're, we're training on art, like prize fighters or something. It's like, you know, Had this morning, just this morning, I had a great idea for um, how to kick this next sequence off where they're doing this battle. And it's not just a... I think I can do it on the next page. These two characters, but not Hondo. They get hit by this lightning bolt thing. I mean, you know, Hondo gets hit by it. But they end up in this kind of freeze ray kind of situation. And that's when Stardust emerges and gets ready to 
do what he came to do, which was to kill Prometheus Powers to get the the um the armbands. And You know, of course he's a villain, so he monologues. And they can still talk. Well, one of the things that this character can do is he has a vocally sort of activated command to change Hondo into different shapes. You've seen it on this page. Where is it? Bim Shalabim. Right? Hondo was the goose. He's back to the monkey. Cheep cheep. So I think we have to use that somehow. It's got to be something. You have anything to say for yourself? Just one thing. Bim shella bim, and then, and then this guy turns into some kind of awesome combat form. All right, now how do we draw this lightning bolt thing? Uh oh. This is an abstract background. We're not going to do a background here. Let's do the, uh, hang on, where's layer two? Should rename that as pencils. What's this sound effect? Don't affect you -less. around there. Tears falling down. Here we go. Oh, by the way, is this that one? We can get rid of that. So this is the page without pencils so far. And now I've, I'm in this world of I got to worry about it a little because I'm drawing a lightning bolt seems like it'd be easy. <laughs> you know, here I'm stressed about like what are the line weights going to be? It's always line weights. What are the line weights going to be like? Let's do this. All right. You know what? This is, I'm going to do it all huge, like all the way across the top. So let's just. Let's just focus on this for right now. Maybe. And is, is crack the uh, sound effect I want to go with? 
I was looking at some of the Jack Kirby ones. Badam. Baram. Boom. You would know. You want to create some contrast because it's a largely open. We might have to do the whole panel in black. And I had a kind of notion about doing like some focus lines like coming in like right on, on that area. But even if we do the focus lines, I'm going to do this blackout area. Um, near the bottom. And the whole purpose of this kind of con this level of contrast is to just draw attention to the things that's near it, that's surrounding. And actually, you could even kind of put some points in there so it's pointing at the thing that they should be looking at. Look at this. Look at this. Check this out. You know, that should all be in there. Look at him. Very first um, Kubert class I took, it was a uh, Tom Mandrake was the teacher, and there was a scene. Um, I think it was called Battle in the Castle that they gave you a script for, and you had to draw. Um, like a two-page or three-page sequence for. And I had these guys with spears, you know, kind of at the lower end of this big battle, men, you know, tableau going on. And he goes, when you have a scene like this, you got some guys with spears. They're literally like arrows pointing. So you have the spears pointing at what you want them to look at. <laughs> Point all the dude's spears in one direction. You know, and that was an eye-opening moment, and he, and uh, in fact, I even had a character up in the foreground, pointing, in towards into the like into the um, you know, into the picture, and he goes, point this guy's point, have him point at what you want them, want the reader to look at. We'll naturally look at it. You know? That made a lot of sense t to me. Mm, wait. Hey, now. All right, now we're getting a, a decent amount of I think we can even still do my focus lines. I'll focus them in right in here. But let's do. All right, let's do the focus lines. Hang on. Drawing guide. Right there. I'm going to put them on. Yeah, I'll put them on here. Actually, you know what? Let's let's not do them here. Let's do them. Let's take nineteen and twenty-one. Reduce that. There's my other wolf. All right, let's let's add another layer, right here. Okay. Now this other layer, twenty-two. 
That's the one. Okay. So how do we do it? How do we do the focus lines? We're still going to do the sound effect, but we're going to do it in a different place. All right, now. erase all the stuff that fell outside of the panel then we're going to reassess and then we're going to start working on big sound effect big sound effect oh wait and turn our focus lines i mean our drawing guide off all right i gotta fix this bottom area let's do that Inky. I think we need to outline Hondo as well, and the reason is it's a plot point that Hondo is not affected or not hit. He like they miss him, so we won't show him outlined in the electrical cage. And of course, you know when Stardust makes his appearance, he's like, well. He doesn't care that he missed the little monkey. He doesn't realize what Honda really is. But more importantly, at this size, right, this is print size, we don't have a lot of clarity of what, what's going on in there. So we want to be able to outline the shape that you're supposed to be looking at. You know, once again, it comes down to that. And then comes down the line weight. We only have two colors to play with. Technically we could do gray, but we don't we're not doing gray. We ain't doing it. It's the coward's way out. I have done things with gray. In fact, the one um Prometheus Power story before this one has gray scale in it. When I was, you know, because you're trying to do anything you can to get depth out of the image. And my idea when I started this one, I mean, I made a conscious choice not to do any grayscale because I thought, okay, you know, now's my chance to apply some of the lessons learned. Let's 
about inking, because the whole point of inking is also to create readability and depth. I will stop at nothing. The contrast between black and white is such a powerful tool. If you're not careful, you know, it can kind of overwhelm your drawing. And I'm, that's my fear is that that's what that will happen with this. I'm not above it. It'll defeat me like it defeats anything else. There's also a distinct possibility that I've made these figures just a bit too small. But I think we're okay. Look. All right, now, as we draw the clouds, like, what is this line? So you draw your hatches reaching towards the light. So the light being the lightning bolt. How would you do this one? I've done that blackout area there. Does it look a bit out of place? It looks a bit out of place. All right, let's, let's change this into more clouds. Now you see why I put this all in a different layer. <laughs> so I can erase. All right. A crack K A K R A A A K. Okay, so let me show you my lettering trick. This is a cool trick. All right, we're going to go on the pencils layer. I'm just erasing all these pencils right here, just in this area. Got this nice open spot right here. 
And we're on the pencil slayer. And uh, we could use we could use rusty nib or anything else, but we want to get it real big. That's obviously too big. That's okay. We're gonna soikle it, make it a bit smaller. Now I'm going to warp it a little bit, warp it up, pinch it, uniform size, how about that? Like that, so it's it's kind of like centered in there. See? Now we're going to go back on layers. And then let's make another layer. I'm consolidating the layers as we go, so we're not just... Um, making an infinite number of layers. Not everyone has the um, ability to make infinite layers, you know, depending on your memory. On the iPad, you can only have so many. And because you drew it with such a thick line, single space, you know, single You know what, I don't like that K. That's the R. That, I don't like that K at all either. The exclamation point is part of the lettering too. All right. Take the pencil back out for just a moment. For just a moment. All right, now one of our problems here is we're using this rusty nib pen that's got holes in it. That worked. See all the holes that are in there? But it's cool because it kind of looks like it's distressed, you know, a little bit. It's got very vintage-y looking print artifacts <laughs> built in. Okay, now we did this crack thing here. Here's a problem. We've got overlaying letters, which is okay, by the way. It's okay to have the letters overlay themselves. This should be okay. And then this one. Tears falling down. How about that? How about this? Okay, good crunch. Lettering 101, right? Pretty, pretty easy. And then let's make it three dimensional. We're going to go. Kind of left and underneath, but we're going to switch to the, by the time we get to the other side, it's to the right and underneath. Is 
Just remember, once again, we only have white and black. Oof. Freaking orange I just erased. All right. All right. Now, if this is left and underneath, and this one's right, that means this one will be slightly to the right. This one will be almost dead on, but still underneath. This will be slightly to the left, but still underneath. Also, I'm detecting a problem. The problem is that, you say, well, it's the lightning bolt starts way up here on the cloud, and then it, it's confusing when it's above the lettering. So we're going to go ahead and take out that part. Don't leave anything confusing if you can. Now, <laughs> this is if you can. There's a good chance you end up having to draw something that it's hard to make it understandable. And, you know, that's the rub. So you got to figure out the least confusing way <laughs> that's still within your power. Uh, and then sometimes you're going to get it wrong anyways. I mean, I'm going to get it wrong anyways. It's just inevitable. All right. I think that's it. I think we're done. There's too much white space up here, so we're going to texture in some more. I do not have page 11 drawn. I'm going to rough that out today so at some point. I've also I've got... Um, it's like a commission I'm doing for this role-playing game zine. I've got some um, like clip art, spot art that's going to go in the publication. And I drew all the pencils for it, but I haven't drawn the actual... Well, that's going to be on the, well, it's one of our hatch marks or something. Where is it? Up here? Well, where is it? It's not there. Ah, it is on the, it's on the lettering layer. Pretty hopelessly messy in certain areas. So I should probably try and fix some of it. All right, I think we're there. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Looks like we're done with page 10, finally. And I'm gonna cruise on to page 11 start the actual battle the thing we've been waiting to do the whole comic took us 11 pages to get to it <laughs> the battle begins A lot of weird cruelty and brainwashing going on in the world right now. You don't have to be a part of it. You know what I need to do? I know the video's over. That's the video. I need to hatch in the figures. Now that we have such a stark light source, I don't have to do much on it. All right, like I said, please like, follow, and subscribe, and there will be more Prometheus powers every single day until it gets done. All right, talk to you.
to you later.